hey loves and welcome back to my channel it's ijoma here and in today's video we're going to be learning how to make these trendy shirts we are going to start with the pattern draft on first and these are the two pattern uh, the two papers that i'm going to be using and they are all on fold i'll be cutting out this paper on fold so that we will not get confused so the unique thing about this shared dress is that it does not have any side seam from the half length down you will not see any side seam so we are going to be drafting at the skirt part of the shared dress it has a half length so i'll take out my half length and from there i will mark my hip line my knee line and the full length of the gown so if your half length is 16 you will have to make it 15 the half length should come up a bit it should come up by like one inch so if your half length is 17 you should make it 16 if it is 16 make it 15 inches so i am done marking my waistline my hip line my knee line the full length and one inch seam allowance i added one inch for the hemming of the down part so this is a shirt dress the front side will have a button allowance it will have a button then the back part has a joining as well the back of this dress has a joining more like a zipper allowance so i'll take my normal waist measurements my hip measurement divided by four my knee measurements and i will draft just a basic skirt the way we draft our basic skirt so for this dress you are going to have a joining at the back that is for the skirt area you are going to have a joining at the back and you are going to have your button at the front that means you will have four pieces for this skirt so here is the normal skirt pattern that i have i will use it and cut out another skirt pattern this two of them will be equal none of them will have button allowance or whatsoever you are going to use a band for the button allowance so this one that i'm cutting is still the same thing with the first one that i cut so you are going to extend your hip line your knee line your waistline so that you will not get confused so using your ruler you are going to extend all these lines that you have at the other side at the other pattern paper all of them should be at the same line so that when we are closing the side seam we will not get confused so this dress does not have a side seam the fabric does not have a side seam that means you close your side seam on your pattern paper so i have divided the first pattern paper into two i'm labeling the waist the hip the knee and the full length so i will also go ahead and divide this second pattern paper i will extend the lines and i will still label my hip my knee line my waistline so that i will not get confused so after doing this i am going to divide it into two again i'm going to divide it into two so we have two pieces for the front two pieces for the back so this is the these are the front pieces there are two and these are the back pieces i'll go ahead and label back back so you can see what we have right now the next thing that i'm going to do is to close the side seam of this gown you are going to close your side seam in order to close it what you are going to do is that you will use your masking tape to close you can see the way i placed the front and then the back the sides are facing the each side is facing the other side so we are going to close this using a masking tape so this is the reason why i said you should extend your hip line your knee line your waistline so that you will not get confused when closing the pattern paper all the lines need to align when closing so if you push them together you will join them with the masking tape so i have closed one side So for now, we cannot close our waistline. Let's just close from the hip line down to the full length. Let's just close the ones that we can do. Now, after, we are still going to close the waist area. So after closing the side seam, the waist is still open. In order to close the waist side seam, we are going to slash the hip line. We are going to slash the hip line from the center front this is the front paper you are going to slash the hip line from the center front center front please the back remains the same do not slash the back every slashing that you are going to be doing should start from the center front that area where you are going to have your button if you check the picture very well you will notice that the gathers are 
along the button allowance so i will slash from the hip line from the center front so that i'll be able to close the waistline so after slashing this hip line you can see i was able to move the waistline so now the waistlines are closed we have two pieces the next thing you're going to be doing now is to be slashing this paper your slash should start from the center front to the back from the center front to the back so all these lines that i am marking right now are the lines that i will slash from i don't know if you understand if you are cutting your pattern paper you will start from the center front and you will slash towards the back so all these lines that i'm marking now are the lines where i am going to cut open so i'm done marking on one side i will start from the other side so you can see that we now have two pieces from four pieces we only have two pieces one for the right one for the left we have succeeded in closing the side seam of this gown you don't need any side seam so right now i am slashing the pattern paper from the center front towards the center back from the center front towards the center back do not open the back the back remains the same the back part of this gown will not have any gather or any drip so right now i am done slashing and please your slash should stop at the knee line it should not cross your knee line you can see that i did not slash from my knee down to the full length so after spreading this is what you have this is what you have after spreading your slash so this is the fabric that i'll be using this is a doll face fabric and i have two yards here and the two yards is on fold my fabric is on fold so i am going to place my fabric on my table it is on fold so that once i cut i will get the right and the left pieces at the same time so right now i am going to place this pattern paper i am using one pattern paper for now anything that i cut out on this one is the same thing like this is the, the same as the other one so let me just use one pattern paper to cut out the two sides so this is what i have you go ahead and spread the more you spread the more you gather the fuller the gathers i don't know if you understand the more you spread this pattern paper the fuller the gathers around the button allowance so i am done spreading and i'll go ahead and connect i'll use my chalk to connect so while connecting i'll be adding one one inch seam allowance around everything you can add half an inch seam allowance but i want to add one inch seam allowance so that i will not run short so after connecting these lines you are going to cut out spread as much as you can it depends on how full you want your drapes or you want your gathers to be so after doing that i will go ahead and cut out so after cutting out you can see the new shape we are getting it looks like a flay somehow so this is the essence of pattern drafting we have closed our side seam that place where we have our cello tape or our masking tape is the side seam we have closed that area we have eliminated the side seam so after cutting out this is what we have if i remove my pattern paper this is what we have so i will separate the two of them and we have the right and the left there is no side seam now so right now we are going to gather the center if you are sewing you will gather the center this place that i'm gathering now is the bottom area so if you gather the bottom area you can see what you have around there you will have your drape so the same thing will happen to the other one and after that the the back seam like the zip that zipper allowance or the the joining at the side will remain the same you don't have to gather at that joining at the back so this is the pattern for the front i'll fold this fab this paper is on fold and the top of this gown is a cut together top it is a cut together top and like i said this gown has a half length so my half length is 15 i'll mark my 15 inches and i'll add one inch seam allowance remember i told you to go up my normal half length is 16 but i used 15 because of the type of shirt gown that i am making so after the 15 inches i marked my allowance and right now i'll go ahead and connect this line i'll go ahead and connect this line so after connecting the line i will connect my allowance line i added two inches for seam allowance then i'll mark my neckline that is three I am marking the back pattern first of all so i marked three by one inch three by one inch that is for the back pattern we are cutting the back first of all so using the back we can cut out the front so the back will be on fold 
but the front will be two pieces because of the button allowance remember so after that we mark our normal shoulder and from our normal shoulder we will go down by 12 inches 10 inches for the normal sleeve length and 12 inches for the turn up so from the normal shoulder you add extra 12 inches then from there you come down by 11 inches so you connect from your sleeve length down to that 11 inches this 11 inches is our new armhole the armhole is way below my normal armhole if you want you can add a shoulder slant that is if you want my normal armhole is 8 inches but i made this one 11 inches because we are cutting a free cut together bodies so at the waistline take your normal waist measurement and add extra 5 inches to your waist measurement because we are going to pleat the waist a bit so after adding after marking your normal waist measurement divided by four you add extra five inches so this is where i added my extra five inches then i'll connect to my sleeve this is just the cut together so using this pattern paper we will cut out the front the front neckline will be three by three three inches wide and three inches deep so using this paper you can cut the front as well the only difference between the front and the back is the front will have an opening at the center but the back will be on fold so i'll cut off the back neckline for now then i'll also go ahead and draft my front neckline so that after cutting the back i can use this pattern to cut out my front and then open the center so that is all for the pattern drafting in our next tutorial i'm going to take you guys through the sewing process the sewing may take a little time but i'll take my time to explain that's why i divided this video into part one and part two so that i can explain very well so if you pleat the upper bodies this is what it should look like you have to drape it a bit just a bit so thank you guys and see you all in my next video please do not forget to click on the notification bell so that anytime i upload a new video you will be notified and do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up see you all in my next video bye